Good day, everyone, and welcome to another series of Feats Talks, your daily bite of learning. I am Sir Feats, your ultimate teach guy. For this day, we will talk about regarding the concepts of reproduction, genetic engineering, and its associated technology. Sit tight and prepare yourself for a new learning experience. For this video lesson, here are our objectives. Number one is to describe the different ways of how representative animals reproduced. Number two is to describe the process of genetic engineering. And number three, to evaluate the benefits and risk of using GMOs or genetically modified organism. For this lesson, we will try to uncover the concept of reproduction and its relationship to the genetic engineering. For the first part of our discussion, we will try to answer this question. What is sexual and asexual reproduction? Let's try to uncover first the meaning of reproduction. Reproduction is one of the basic characteristics of living things. It is also important because this is the natural process wherein an organism transferred its genes to the next generation. We can also say that it is the production of offspring. We can also add that reproduction is the process of production of an offspring where two organisms are giving one sex cells which in encapsulate the whole genetic information of an individual. We can also say that reproduction is a fertilization or the process of fertilization. Reproduction in fertilization is the process of unification of the two sex cells, which is the sperm cell from the male and egg cell from the female. As you observe to this illustration, it showcases the fertilization process. We have different types of reproduction. Okay, specifically, we have what we call the sexual reproduction and, of course, the asexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, it is the process of joining of two sex cells, which is coming from the male and the female. This one is also called as the gametes. There is need for unification of two sex cells from different sexes, which is also known as fertilization. If the fertilization is successful, the fertilized egg will develop into an organism within the uterus. And then eventually, it will become a complete organism and then followed by the yeah, unification of the two sex cells. The egg cell will evolve into a multicellular, which is called a zygote. The next type of reproduction is what we call the asexual reproduction. It is the process of reproduction wherein the mother cell split to create an offspring. If there is no unification nor use of two sex cells, the cell will continuously divide until it can form a new organism, which is very different from the sexual reproduction. Because in sexual reproduction, we need to have the two sex cell, which is the sperm and the egg cell. While in the asexual reproduction, there is no need of two sex cells or the two gametes. Before we go to the next presentation, let me discuss to you this definition of terms. The first definition that we have is the gametes. Don't be confused. When we say gametes, it is also the term sex cells, which is the sperm cell and, of course, the egg cell. Second definition of term is chromosome. Chromosome is an organized pact of DNA which is being transferred and combined during the process of reproduction. The third term is zygote. It is the fertilized eggs and the result of the union of the egg cell and the sperm cell. Fourth terminology is what we call as the mitosis. This is the process of duplication of cells. And we also have the term embryo. It is the early developmental stage of an animal within the uterus of the mother. All of these terminologies will be used in the next presentation. Now, 
Let's take a look on this illustration showing to you an overview on the process of sexual reproduction. Once again, in sexual reproduction, there is a need of two sex cells, as you can see to the illustration. We have the sex cells coming from the female, which is the egg, and of course, the sex cells coming from the male, which is the sperm. These two sex cells, which is the sperm and the egg cell, contains the genetic information. This genetic information are encapsulated in the chromosomes, as you can see to the illustration. The female will contribute 23 pairs of chromosomes, while the male will also contribute 23 pairs of chromosome, completing the 46 chromosome of an human organism. Eventually, these two sex cells will undergo the process of fertilization or unification of two sex cells, which will form what we call as the zygote. This zygote will develop into an embryo or the developing organism and will stay in the uterus for the development until its maturity or what we call as the labor. While for asexual reproduction, there are many types involved. Let's begin with the first one, which is called as the budding. In budding, it occurs when individuals arise throughout the outgrowths from a parent. So what does it mean? The process called budding occurs when individual arise throughout the outgrowth from a parent. In simplest explanation, we can say that this process, the offspring was born from a bud or extended parts of the parent. As we can see to this organism, the bud is here, okay, the outgrowth of that extension of body parts that eventually this one will break off and then it will have a new offspring or organism. The second type of asexual reproduction is what we call as the fission. Fission, on the other way, is the process or separation or division of an organism to form individuals of approximately same size. As you can see to this illustration, okay, in fission, the parent organism will split or separate to create an offspring, as you can see to a paramecium example on this illustration. While well, in fragmentation, okay, it is when animals' body breaks into different parts which later generate to form several individuals. A very good example of that is what is happening in a starfish, wherein the offspring are coming from the certain piece of the parent that break out, and these breakout parts will develop to form as a separate organism, as you can see to the illustration below. The last type of asexual reproduction is what we call as the partenogenesis. So what is the meaning of partenogenesis? It is where the egg cell develops without the process of fertilization. Take note that the only sex cells involved in partenogenesis is the egg cell only. Okay, let's proceed. This process of reproduction is somewhat amazing because you just need one sex cell to reproduce. Let me discuss the illustration that shows the complete details about partenogenesis, which is also called as the virgin birth. Okay, so on this illustration, the parent egg cell, as you can see, will be divided into four. Okay. The three egg cells will be discarded or thrown away, while the other one will continue to its reproduction, as you can see here. This remaining egg cell will divide to create genetic material, as you can see on this illustration. This two black line represent the divided genetic material of that egg cell. Eventually, this, ge this divided genetic material will combine and then it will create now another organism or the new offspring. Now, let's move to the second part of our discussion and that is about the genetic engineering. Because of our knowledge about DNA or the building blocks or the blueprint of life, we have unlocked different technologies that will be beneficial for human race. 
One of this technology is what we call genetic engineering, wherein we alter or modify the genetic code or the DNA of an organism to make a better version of it. In addition to that, we can say also that genetic engineering is the process of using recombinant DNA technology to alter the genetic makeup of an organism. Question, sir. What is the meaning of recombinant DNA technology? Recombinant DNA technology is the specific type of technology we applied in genetic engineering, wherein we cut and paste new version of DNA to create a better version of DNA. Genetic engineering is beneficial specifically to the following. First one is for pharmaceutical companies. In creating new lines of medicines or treatments or cure for diseases, we can also use genetic engineering in industrial purposes, which can be used to improve the daily livings and manufacturing of basic goods. In agriculture also, it is very important for improving the quality of crops and protection from pests. We can also apply genetic engineering to medicine and, of course, to the other industries related to genetic engineering. Okay. On this illustration, I will explain to you how DNA recombinant technology is happening. On this illustration, you can see here that there is a human cell, okay, and of course, a bacterial cell. Each organism contains DNA, okay, and eventually will be extracted and decoded to determine the best and the worst traits to change and added respectively. After identifying the traits, okay, as you can see on this illustration, the DNA from the human and bacteria will be cut and pasted to form a new DNA code. So you can see to this illustration, the DNA of the human cell, okay, here, will be cut. Okay, the bad version of that DNA code will be cut. And of course, a good version from a specific subject, example for this illustration, is a bacteria wherein it will be pasted to the human DNA. Eventually, after this process, the newly created version of DNA will be inserted to bacteria for cultivation and eventually for further studies on its effects and benefits for humans and other aspects. So this is how DNA recombinant technology is happening. Take note of our word, cut and paste. We are cutting the DNA code and of course, we are adding or we are pasting the better version of the DNA that we want to add to the specific DNA that we alter or modify. Let's now proceed to the next part of our discussion, and this is about issues in GMOs. GMO, also known as genetically modified organisms, are organisms that undergo the process of genetic engineering. These organisms are the product or the result of genetic manipulation, genetic alteration, or genetic modification. A very good example of that one is Dali, the sheep, which is the first organism to undergo cloning, which is an example of genetically modified organism. The second Second picture is a rainbow corn. Okay, a rainbow corn is also an example of GMO, wherein different traits of different bacteria, different bacteria that produce such nutrients essential for human beings, are incorporated or are pasted to the DNA code of a corn. In the United States, some product has this certification, non-GMO verified, because People in the United States are very conscious on what they are eating. That's why their government are stipulating different rules on the verification of what food that their people are eating. 
So what are the risk issues in the GMO or genetically modified organism? The first one is genetic contamination because it may eventually alter the whole population will the, which the effect is still unknown. Number two is about competition with natural species. Competition in the ecosystem may cost imbalance to the food chain. And eventually, if there will be an imbalance to the food chain, everything which is part of the food chain will also rearrange, will also have an impact on it. The third one is the impact in the ecosystem. Obviously, due to the changes in population of the genetic pool and the competition, the ecosystem may also undergo changes. And the fourth one is the adverse effects on the health of the people. Okay, obviously, we don't know what will be the effect of this GMO to the health of a specific people, especially to those people who are already have diseases on their body. The fifth one is the unpredictable and unintended effects and other unknown features of it. No one knows what will be the effect or the impact of GMO because we need to study further what are the other impact of GMO to our body and, of course, to our ecosystem. Right now, we are entering a new world but not knowing what will happen next because we don't know what will be the result of the alteration or to the changes of DNA. So this is the end of our video lesson. Hopefully, you have learned new things and see you next week.